question is, is the gap 10% or more? And by majority, you mean he'll secure at least 50%? That's correct. And, and it's a ratio that I'm looking for. If it's less than 10%, she can make the case that she should stay in. Mm -hmm. If it's more than 10%, when she put a lot of time into here, she put a lot of effort, a lot of money into it, she had the governor following with her in every stop that they went, and he was very powerful. I don't know how you continue a campaign when the next state is South Carolina, mm -hmm. her state, and she's losing it by big numbers. Her campaign sent out a memo today and I'm not sure if you've seen it, but essentially saying everybody stay calm. We're staying in this race. They mm -hmm. signed off on the letter with see y'all in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Seems to be an indication we're going there regardless on February 24th. But her campaign manager pointed out in that memo, on Super Tuesday, 11 of the 16 states are open primaries. Is there a, a, a world in which she may not do well in South Carolina, but come Super Tuesday, enough Democrats could think Trump has the Republican nomination locked up if I don't do something and I'll go out and vote for Nikki Haley? Yes, there is, but here's the problem. That world exists here in New Hampshire. And if you can't pull it off here in New Hampshire, why should you be able to pull it off in Super Tuesday? That's why the margin is so important. I'm not looking at winners or losers tonight. I believe I know what's going to happen, but the margin is everything. This 60% number in the Suffolk poll is getting a lot of attention. It's the first time that Donald Trump has hit that level. Are those Ron DeSantis voters? who are being added to the pile, how does he continue to gain? It's not like he's knocking on doors or doing anything different. Well, he's not knocking on doors. He's no. simply running these rallies. They get yeah. a lot of attention. First, you lose Vivek, and all of his votes go to Trump. Actually, even before that, you lose Chris Christie. The expectation was that two-thirds of his vote, maybe three-quarters, mm. would end up with Nikki Haley. That does not seem to be the case. That's it looks incredible. like it's more than 50, it's about somewhere between 50-50 and 60-40, and with the Florida governor pulling out, those numbers are probably two to one or even three to one going to Trump. And here's the interesting factoid. All the candidates who were running six months ago have dropped out and supported Trump, mm -hmm. not Haley. I think that's significant. I think that's had an impact on the polling. And as people make that final decision, they seem to be deciding that they're going to go with the candidate they know rather than the candidate that they don't know. Well, one of those former candidates who backed Trump was South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, who was appointed to the Senate by Nikki Haley more than a decade ago. Chris Sununu, the governor, and of course a Haley surrogate, told us that it was just disrespectful, but ultimately he thought it didn't matter. So is it that is it that endorsements matter if you don't get them, not if you do? Is that essentially <laughs> what you're saying? That's a, that's a great question. Um, they matter when there's so many of them. Hmm. There are so many congressmen, so many senators that have endorsed Trump in the last 10 days. So many people from South Carolina even came up here. The current governor of South Carolina did a speech at the rally that I think we all attended a few days ago. That's significant because it sends a sign. And those undecided, it's less than 10%, but those undecideds are looking, where are the winds blowing? Where are the candidates making their decisions? And when they see that they're all from South Carolina, that does have an impact. Spending time with Frank Luntz on Bloomberg TV and radio, talk to us about the New Hampshire primary. What was such an important part of the process for so many years seems to have been downgraded into, I don't even know what we're calling this now, the lack of attendance that we're seeing, the lack of excitement, the lack of carnival atmosphere, and what appears to be a, a sense of inevitability in the state that's supposed to bring surprises. So I remember this set, I remember other sets back four years ago, you couldn't get into the hotel. Right. You're, you're 50 feet away from the lobby here. It's empty. There's no wait to get a table. What's going on? There's no one standing up. There's still candidates walking through. There's still governors, senators. But the intensity isn't there first because the Democrats don't really have a primary. I bought a hat that says, write in Joe Biden. <laughs> Nobody wanted to buy it from me. <laughs> Nobody cares. And on the What, you were trying to arbitrage this thing? How much did you buy the hat for? What I, were you trying to sell it for? I bought it for nine bucks, tried to sell it for 19 bucks, and I oh, failed. Oh, there you go. And by the way, then I don't think Bloomberg's ever going to invite me on because you want people who make money, not people who lose money. <laughs> And so there's nothing on the Democratic side. And on the Republican side, the feeling is that the decision has been made. And I will tell you this. I've never been to a rally like Donald Trump's here. 
I had to stand out line for 45 minutes. It was snowing. It was cold as heck. Mm -hmm. And nobody left that line. They were willing to mm -hmm. wait until the end. There were people still lined up that couldn't get into the building. They all turned away, yeah. That's significant. Now, now Nikki Haley has big rallies, but nothing like that. And the intensity. Donald Trump spoke for over an hour and a half. Nobody left. Mm -hmm. Everybody laughed at jokes. Everybody participated. There is a passion to his supporters. Yeah, and we've seen that in, in polling. They are far more enthusiastic to show up for him. More of their votes are for him rather than against Nikki Haley. That's not necessarily the case for Haley. A lot of those votes are cast for her because they're, tech, they're against Trump more than they are for her. So it gets to the turnout question on the point of how much enthusiasm Trump has with his supporters. We've heard over the last several days that it could be a record turnout for this vote, something to the tune of 320,000 plus, and that higher turnout would benefit Nikki Haley. Could it actually benefit Trump more if it's his voters that are driving that high turnout? Absolutely. I'm not convinced that this is going to be a record turnout. In fact, I actually believe that it will not Doesn't be. Doesn't that sound unlikely based on what you just said? Uh, because those who've decided are participating and those who don't have a candidate in this race, because normally there's four, five, six candidates right now. Mm -hmm. Now there are only two. So I think that depresses turnout. But the thing I want to raise with you, because viewers are always trying to look into the future, is that there are a lot of people who do not like Joe Biden, do not like Donald Trump. And if Trump wins by 10 points, tomorrow the conversation's going to be, is there going to be a third party candidate? Does that third party candidate have credibility? And will people be looking for an alternative to the two party system? I think the answer to that is yes.